Today is the 12th anniversary of a big tornado outbreak. Wonder if anybody remembers that one. May 24th, 2011, in Oklahoma. That's it right there. EF5 wedge near El Reno and Piedmont. And that's going to be that storm right there at the center of the screen. Took a track like that. Lots of damage as it crossed Interstate 40 and tracked east-northeast towards Piedmont. Nine deaths and something like 180 injuries. So that was certainly a bad storm. Well, nothing like that today. It's more tropical across much of the country. The North Atlantic Oscillation is in the high range, but trending down. So the flow out there in the Atlantic is starting to weaken a little bit. The PNA is showing neutral. Arctic Oscillation is coming down from high levels, so the polar vortex starting to diminish. And Matt and Julian Oscillation is in Phase 7. What happens in Phase 7? Well, it tends to be warm in the southwest deserts into the Rockies, especially in the summer, and wet in Louisiana, East Texas, Arkansas, and the Mississippi River Delta. And the seasonal temperature outlook issued from the Climate Prediction Center just days ago looks warm for much of the country, especially in New Mexico and Arizona. There's the surface analysis for this afternoon. I accidentally got it a little bit more cluttered with station plots because I was doing some other map series last night. But uh, it is active out there in the western U.S., a new Pacific system moving through Nevada. You can see those temperatures down in the 50s from the Idaho border down towards Austin, Nevada. Part of that is going through Montana as well, active cold front moving into the eastern part of the state, thunderstorms roaming that part of the country. And up in the northeastern U.S., a fresh incursion of Canadian air coming down through the Great Lakes into upstate New York and into Maine. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s this afternoon with some showers and storms from Maine into Massachusetts. Let's take a closer look at that. And we've got our line of showers and storms moving through Portland, Boston, and approaching New York City. That's it right there. Cold air following in its wake and out ahead of it, lots of tropical air and even some smoke from those Canadian wildfires. An SPC general risk is in effect from upstate New York into New England. And we've got frost advisories and a few freeze warnings in effect for Michigan and parts of northern Wisconsin. Lots of thunderstorm activity today in Florida, pushing out another outflow boundary. We saw this back on Monday. And this area of storms extends from Miami right up to Tampa and up to Apalachicola. Pretty cool town name there, Apalachicola. There used to be a WSR-57 radar station there. It was very important. It used to be on the Weather Channel back in the early days, but it's no longer there. It's been replaced by other radars. Not much else going on. Marginal risk in the southern half of Florida. That's going to be mostly for wind. And let's head east into Texas. We do have thunderstorms out and about. I can hear some thunder outside right now. Storms all the way from Kansas down to east Texas, where we are and also out there in Colorado and near Clayton. And there it is, an enhanced risk area from Clayton all the way down south of Clovis. And we've also got a severe watch box out for that area. Most of the northern plains is pretty quiet this afternoon. A lot of that region has been in a drought over the past month or two. Chicago, if they get no more rain, they will close out May with the second driest May on record, the driest since 1992. Most of the rain is out there in the high plains. Most of the moisture has been shunted very far to the west, and that's feeding that convective activity we have there in eastern Montana. And it stretches all the way from the Saskatchewan border down to Cody and Gillette. And even up there in northeastern Montana, the storms are not very well organized. You can see an outflow boundary pushing away from this cluster south of Glasgow. But due to the weak flow, they're having a lot of trouble trying to organize. 
Nothing notable going on in the southwestern U.S. The lower deserts are clear. San Joaquin Valley clear, and most of the turbulent weather is up there in Nevada along that frontal system. And this is where my analysis differs from the Weather Prediction Center. I brought the cold front from Tonopah down to Los Angeles. I was looking in the San Joaquin Valley, and I was thinking those temperatures should be up in the 80s or even the lower 90s. Not today. That's some very cool weather. And also, I can see this banding of the thickness contours indicating that cold air has pushed into the Californian interior. And you can see that they kept that front way up north, and I don't agree with that. So it definitely does pay to do your own surface analysis, because that gets you more grounded in the weather, and sometimes your results are better. And in the northwestern U.S., very little going on in that region, much cooler than what we had about a week ago. Marginal risk from northern Nevada up towards Montana. And there's a look at the satellite imagery. Definitely looks like a downturn in the precipitation activity out there in the northern Rockies. Most of that is found a little bit further to the southeast than what we had a couple days ago. And then heading up into Alaska, we pick up an active frontal system out there in the Gulf of Alaska. We do have flash flood watches in parts of the Alaskan interior with that runoff still taking place in the rivers there, ongoing snow melt, that kind of thing. And they're looking for some soaking rains this weekend in the eastern Alaskan interior, possibly up to half an inch or an inch at places like Fairbanks, Took, and Eagle. Up to the north, another blast of cold air batting down the hatches if you're in the Canadian high Arctic. Look at that, gusting to 38 knots, 16 degrees. Can you imagine being there right now? That's behind this very strong frontal system, which is moving southeast. South of that, temperatures are near 60 degrees. So quite a change across northern Canada. And then dropping back south, picking up a little bit of that wildfire smoke around Yellowknife, down towards high level and Uranium City. And then as we go south and east, we pick up that cold Canadian high across James Bay. And that will be gradually sinking south over the next few days. And we do have a super typhoon roaming around the Pacific. Kind of weird for that to be happening in May. But here it is. Got 130 knots sustained winds on that storm. It just passed through Guam in the past 24 hours. I've got some radar to show you on that very shortly, but that is heading to the east-northeast. We are looking for intensification up to a Category 5 storm by tomorrow night. Let's go back to Monday, looking at that typhoon coming together. This is showing a central dense overcast way up to the north. We've got Guam that will pop into the picture very shortly, but if we run that forward, you can kind of see that storm gradually organizing. Now, this is not a very attractive enhancement scheme. This is the Dvorak curve, but it is very important, very useful for looking at intensities. And there you can see that I coming together. It has a very symmetric structure. Let me stop that for a second. That's going to be Guam right there, Rota, Tinian, and Saipan. So this is going to be heading for the area between Rota and Guam. That's called the Rota Channel. And there's the I, so that's going to kind of move like that. We roll that forward, and this is looking at yesterday, about 24 hours ago. The storm seems to regain that central dense overcast structure, maybe a little bit of de-intensification, but heading for that area north of Guam. And we continue that into last night. Passes just north of Guam, and we see the eye reemerge once again. And it is on a upward intensification trend. So this will remain in the news for a while, but we're not looking for any imminent landfalls. Quite possibly in Taiwan, but that's still several days away. And here's the radar imagery for last night, ending at 0330 Zulu. And the radar site got knocked offline due to a communications outage. This is the center of the storm heading for the north part of Guam and for the Rota Channel. 
And at about this time, the gusts were picking up near 90 to 100 miles an hour, and that was the last frame that we received from that radar. And this is what it looks like right now. Conditions improving at Guam, so they can start focusing on the recovery process. The next problem area looks to be Taiwan for several days from now. Back here in the U.S., the big story has been the lack of upper-level flow. You can see the polar front jet is well up to the north in Canada, and it's not all that strong, barely getting 90 to 100 knots up there. So things are somewhat stagnant and tropical through much of the country, and this is when detailed analysis becomes especially important because your severe weather events tend to come more from mesoscale accidents than brute force dynamics. Here's a look at the 500 millibar flow this evening. Big ridge from West Texas all the way up to the Dakotas. Not enough to completely shut down convection, but there's definitely an absence in the northern plains. You have to get way out into this faster flow to pick that up. The flow of moisture running from Texas all the way up through the high plains like that, troughing in the western U.S., and this other active weather system moving through New England associated with that strong cold air advection. So over the next couple of days, we're going to see that ridge break off into a cutoff high across Minnesota. So it should be fairly warm up there. Troughing in California, so conditions will be unsettled in that part of the country. And I'll just go quickly through the rest of this. You can see that Rex block get established from the Great Lakes down to the southeastern U.S. That's when we have a large cutoff low south of a large cutoff high. And the flow tends to get kind of backed up when that kind of thing happens. And that's not going to really break up until maybe midweek next week. So more of the same is definitely a good rule of thumb to go by. There will be a few interesting developments. We've got the cold air advection through the eastern U.S., the fresh incursion of cold air, and the older front through Florida, like that. You saw that on the opening surface analysis. And then we've got some tropical flow returning up through the Great Plains. This is a chart showing moisture at one kilometer above the ground, so about three to 3,500 feet above the surface. The darker green colors indicate richer moisture and higher dew points. So we're going to see this coastal low come together over the next couple of days. Let's watch that take hold. And we see that off of Georgia and South Carolina right there. The flow also accelerates up to the north, picking up to 25 knots, 35 knots, and 50 knots off the coast near Charleston. So we're up to Friday here. That coastal low moves into South Carolina early on Saturday, so it will be very gusty in North Carolina down to the Columbia area for Saturday, and that will also bring moisture inland through North Carolina, so expect a lot of rain in that part of the country this weekend. And that plume of moisture will continue to surge north into the Delmarva and New Jersey as we get into Monday and Tuesday next week. And looking out to the west, yep, more of the same, still funneling that tropical moisture northward across much of the high plains. Here's how the dew points look, and we've also got the surface streamlines. Now, one important note is we've got offshore flow out in the Gulf. Offshore flow tends to be drier, and we've also got a air mass origin from Canada. So even though we do have moisture present, there are a few things working against it. So what we see here is dew points in the 50s in yellow, 60s in orange, but not really too many 70s. So going into Thursday and Friday, some 60s making it up into Texas and even up towards North Dakota. Some 60s moving into the Carolinas with that coastal low. But we're mostly looking at 50s and 60s going into early next week. One little good plume as we get onshore flow there in Texas going all the way up into eastern Nebraska, Minnesota. And just kind of a stagnant weather picture. So not sure what to tell you. Just 
weak surface boundaries, more of that weak flow in the upper levels, and we'll just kind of monitor things from episode to episode and let you know what's going on. In closing, here's some more great footage from Greg showing San Antonio back on Saturday. Monday evening, we did our second live stream for the supporters. Half an hour, and it was a success. Just a reminder, if you want to get access to those, head to our Patreon page and sign up as a supporter. On those live streams, we look at storms in real time, answer questions, and so on. And that is for Patreon supporters only. And due to the internet upgrade, we're on a much faster schedule. Right now as I record this, it's 6.52 p.m. on Wednesday. So you'll see this posted very quickly. Hopefully I can get on an earlier schedule for Friday. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening and Thursday. And we'll see you here in a couple days. Take care. Bye-bye.